All right, a blessed and wonderful morning. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. We want to honor the Spirit of God this morning. Amen. Glory to God. Brother Baron, are you in a position to, to do um a song for us? Yes, sir. Go right ahead, man of God. Go right ahead. You're muted here. Morning, everyone. Are you hearing me? Yes, my Lord, I'm clear. Good morning again, Brother Vernon. And yes, I'm hearing you. I guess all okay. of us are hearing you. Mm -hmm. To fear, no matter way, standing here, no one will catch you. So fight in the rest, no can catch you by surprise. You got this, we heard of. Watching us now, do look as if we can win. Wrap us in your arms and set free. Everything we need is supply. You got this, we don't oh, know oh, that you. Made away. Put her back up against the wall, and it looked as if it was over. You made away. And I'm standing there only because you made a way. You made a way. No mm -hmm. way. Looking back on where we come from. Those below and nothing we done. Deserve love and mercy is Your grace was strong enough. To pick us up and you made a way. When our backs were against the wall, and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. And we're standing in it only because you made a way. Made a way when my back was against the wall, and it looked as if it was over. You made a way. Now I'm standing here only because you made a way. Oh Lord. You move mountains, you cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles, 
impossible. There is nothing that's impossible. And I'm standing here holding because you made move mountains. You call the walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And I'm standing here only because you made you move mountains. You cause the walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made and we're standing in Lord only because you made and we're standing in here only because you made a way you made a way oh you Lord you made a way Jesus you you made a way God you you made a way don't know how but you did it you made a way don't know how but you did it you made a way don't know how but you did it you made a way don't know how but you did it you made a way don't know how but you did it you did it i don't know how i don't know how but i'm grateful yes i don't know how Oh, I don't know why, I don't know why. Over and over and over. Don't know why, but I'm grateful. I don't know how, I don't know how, but I'm grateful. Send it here only because you made. And we're standing here only because you made. And we're standing here only because you made a way. You cause the walls to fall of mountain. You perform miracles. There is nothing that you cannot do. I was standing here only because you made the way. You cause walls to fall, Lord. You cause walls to fall. You cause walls to fall. You cause chains to break. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to your name, God. Thank you for breaking chains this morning, Father God. Thank you for falling the giants, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. You move all those mountains in our way. Mighty God, you cause mountains to fall. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You move mountains, you move mountains. You move mountains, you move mountains. Mountains are moving, are moving. Mountains are moving, mountains are moving. Strongholds are breaking now. Strongholds are breaking. Strongholds are breaking. Strongholds are breaking. You move mountains. 
to call you all so far with your power. You perform miracles, and there is nothing, oh Lord, that you cannot do. And I'm sending me, yes, I'm sending it, yes, I'm sending it. Yes, I'm sending it. Oh, my kids are living. Your kids is living. Thank God they're living. No, who says yes? When the doctor says no, God says yes. When the doctor said no, God says not yet. When the pronouns you said no, God says not yet. He performed miracles for you. Perform miracles, yeah. Thank you, Jesus, for performing miracles. Mighty God, I ask you, God, that this morning you cover us, Mighty God, whatever is about to come in this Zoom meeting this morning, Father God, I pray that it will be nourishment unto our body. I pray, God, that you will fall the giants that are standing over us, Mighty God, this morning, living spirit of the living God, I pray, and I ask, Father God, that you will fall all those giants that are standing over us right now, God, for those that are unlike and those that are not here at this point, I pray, God, that you would fall whatever that is above us. That should not be above us. Things that be not placed over us, over our head. Father God, I pray that you will move the mountains and you will cause all those walls that have been around us to fall this morning. Father God, I pray that you will stand with our bishop firm this morning, as you always do, my God. I pray that you will be the wall that stands around him. Stand around us, Lord. Let him be the carpenter. Let him be the mason. Let him be the builder, mighty God, to build us this morning, to strengthen us, to put the steel in the right place, mighty God, this morning. I pray and I ask that you declare a blessing upon us this morning. Offer him, give him utterance, mighty God, this morning, to speak out, to declare us, mighty God, to bring us closer to you. Reveal to us, mighty God, this morning. I ask that you cover him and his family, cover each and every one of us on this life and our family, because you can perform miracles. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Over to you, Bishop. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you very Amen. much. Amen. God, thank you very much, man of God. I greatly appreciate. Amen. Glory to God. You um, doing our um praise and worship and also glory to God our um opening prayer amen I thank you and I pray the same grace be upon your life amen glory to God hallelujah let me greet you I greet the Holy Spirit again which is ahead of my life and our life let me greet you all amen brother Wright um sister Wright brother Veron amen sister Fiona amen sister Kiki sister Michelle Father Blossom, Abigail, greetings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and those who will join us on the YouTube platform. Let me say um, greetings to you this morning. Amen. I trust and hope that you are blessed and highly favored in the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. We, it's all because of his grace and his mercy why we are here this morning. It's all because of his grace and his mercy why we are not consumed. Amen. And for that reason, we give God thanks. Amen. There are eight of us here. Signifying new beginning. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And nevertheless, even to us, um, just me alone, glory to God, would have stopped. But God knows. Amen. Um, best. So, amen. We're going to continue on where we left off last yesterday at um, Wakefield Church. Amen. Uh, I know that we have a series on, and um, prayer that we are doing still on prayer because talking about altars is also about prayer and you're better able now to understand. So what we are doing is also giving you an Old Testament concept of altars. 
while we do not build those altars anymore with stone, getting the idea of the importance and significance of why it was necessary in the Old Testament and why it is really, really necessary in the New Testament. It's very important, amen, that we understand how to navigate our prayers, amen. And as I said to you yesterday, um, for those who are on the line last night, it's always altars against altars. It's not about you. Amen. And that's why you have to ensure that you have a prayer altar that speak on your behalf. Amen. So we, we look on and 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 Elijah, Elijah rather, and the prophet of Baal, you find out that it was altars against altars. Right? Because um Elijah said to them, Call on your God. Call on your God. And they build their altar and call on your God. While they were calling, Baal did nothing. And Elijah was mocking them and said, Oh, maybe your God's sleeping. Maybe you take a walk, right? Right. And they, they expected, even though they were not worshiping God, they were worshiping Ida. Yet still, <clears throat> sorry, they expected their altars to speak for them. So understand, my brothers and sisters, as we travel or as we travel along this line, you have to understand that people have different altars that are set up. Now understand, don't take for granted. Amen. Where you go, your space, amen, and the people you're coming and in contact with. Because in order to, 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 to be associated with a man of God, a woman of God, our people, our family, you need to know the altar that is back in you. Now, one of the one of the, one of the problems that we have in Christendom is that. We don't, we, we don't try to understand how the spiritual realm operates. Amen. All we want to do is to see things manifest in the natural. We want, as long as our bills are paid, as long as our children are going to school, as long as food is in the house, as long as we have money and we have frequent thing, we are good. And this is where the enemy is robbing us because there's an altar that is working behind the scene that is robbing you and I. Robbing our family, robbing our ministry, robbing, robbing our children, robbing our generation. While it may look like everything is going well materially, there are some damages that have been done. Now, our foreparents, they, they, we are not going to blame them. They, 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 they were ignorant to a lot of things. But the Bible tells us as we increase, right, our generation will increase in wisdom in knowledge and understanding. Amen. And we need to be like the sons of Issachar, Second Chronicles 12, 32, being believers who understand the time. The Bible said the sons of Issachar was men who understood the time to know what would have happened, what would have taken place. Amen. And all these things, right? And I think as believers, we need to get to that point where we understand the time. Now, many of us are fighting against altars, are fighting altars that we have no knowledge of. Brothers and sisters, it is all good to call to bind up things. It's all good to say you're losing things. But the question you have to ask yourself, what are you binding? Yeah? It's a very interesting question. Now, it's all nice in prayer when we can say these words, we bind this and we bind that and we bind that and we bind that. Yes, it's very interesting. And it, it, it looks to others, uh, you know, for others that are out there who love prayer, love the binding and loosing. We look and say, oh, yes, I want to pray like that man, man of God or woman of God. All right. And they try to mimic, right, all that person pray. But understand this. When it comes to spiritual warfare, when it comes to praying with intensity, when it comes to praying, you need to understand what is happening in the spiritual realm. Amen. The enemy has different altars, amen, that attack the child of God. Right? And we need to understand Amen. If we even look at Luke chapter 10, 19, the Bible would have said, Behold, I give you power 
Yes, he gave a power to tread upon scorpions. Now, the enemy can use carpet like spirits. That's an altar. And right, and in order to understand scorpion, we need to now study the characteristics of scorpions. What they do. We know they sting. Yes, but what other characteristics does a scorpion have that we need to know and identify? Amen. So we are in for a big tree. Amen. We are in for a big teaching because this teaching, amen, is going to change the way you pray. And not only will it change the way you pray, but you will now pray with understanding. Amen. You'll pray with the knowledge, knowing that you are not just binding things loosely. You are you, you call it by name. You know exactly the kind of altar that you're dealing with in the spirit. Are we together? Yes, sir. Amen. So now, before running and saying, God, I have power to tread upon scorpions. Now, we need now as believers to get to a place where we start to you now study the characteristics of the scorpion. Because it's the characteristics or the nature of the scorpion. If you study that, you will now understand that these are different methods. These are different um, avenues that the enemy used to come and attack you, attack your ministry, attack your family, attack your children. Now, it goes to another level. Amen. It said, shut up and scorpions and serpent. Now, we understand then from the book of Genesis that God would have said to us, or the writer Moses would have said to us that the serpent was more subtle than every other beast that is on the face of the earth. Yes? So we understand that, and now when you look at the characteristics of the sinning, you understand that there are times when they curl up. Amen? And they take their time. There are different things. They have good smelling. Amen? Their body is 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 prone to to attract heat amen so understand now right when it thing is hot because they are cold blooded animal yeah and their body now attract heat right there's a whole lot of characteristics right and they 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 they, they, they move they move very um strategic you you, you will not hear them until maybe when they strike. Yes? So these are some of the things, even though even the scripture tell us in the positive to be as wise as a serpent. Now understand this. If the Bible would have told you and I to be as wise as a serpent, it simply means that there is something, there's some knowledge that the serpent have that we need to know. Amen. There, there are some characteristics about the serpent that you and I need to know as child of God. Because these are the very things that are affecting our marriage, affecting our family, affecting our finances, affecting our ministry. Because all we want to do is say, yes, God, you give me power to child up on scorpion and that's it. And the scorpion is okay. Because no, and, 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 and serpent, why? Because you have not yet identified the real, the real problem uh, where the enemy is coming from. Amen. So these are some things that we need to understand. So that's why our prayer life is very important. That's why prayer is very important. So it's not just about quoting scriptures. It's about understanding. So understand, for the child of God, for the child of God, we have to be always studying because watch this. The enemy is always upgrading their methods of attack. So not because you pray today, I just say in the name of Jesus Christ, yes, when Jesus, Jesus Christ is powerful, and you bind and loose mean that the same way they are coming today. And that's why it's very important. 
that you have now to you have to utilize this Holy Spirit, utilize the Spirit of God, and allow the Spirit of God to guide you through prayer. Yes, allow the Spirit of God to help you in praying. Allow the Spirit of God to direct your prayers. Amen. Because there are spiritual insight, there are spiritual insight, there are spiritual revelation that God wants to reveal to you and I pertaining to a particular situation. So these are some things that we need to do. So our prior life is very important. So we are we, we, we are going through, amen, dealing with altars, dealing with prayer. So now you are going to understand that the sickness that is coming against you, there's an altar of infirmity that is speaking somewhere. Amen. The, the personal artwork that you think are coming against you, there's an altar there that is speaking. The family member that is coming at you, there's an altar there that is speaking. And to shock many of you, the church that you are going, that you are under, and, uh, that, that people seem to don't like you and under pressure, there's an altar there that is speaking. Oh, man of God, what are you saying? No, why, well, no, an evil altar cannot be in, 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 in the church. No, man of God, what are you saying? All right. Now understand the Bible, the Bible says, Amen. Yes, the Bible says that while, while the Bible says that while, Amen, lose my chain of thought. Amen. Holy Spirit. The Bible says that while Paul and Silas was going to pray, while they was going to pray, amen, what happened? The Bible said, a girl, this girl with the spirit of divination approached them. Yes? This girl. So you understand that even in the place of prayer, even in the church, the demon can come in and launch an attack. And what is happening is that many persons overlook this. Because understand this now, that the demon did not, and the spirit did not come in there and manifest anything wrong, really. The spirit comes in and says, these men are men of the Most High God who show us the way of salvation. But some of us who are very high-headed and love self-praise, I love people who say, oh, if people don't call your name, you're vexed. Demons will trick you this way. They will say the right thing in order to distract you from the main thing. Oh, God, somebody don't get that. They will say the right things in order to distract you from the main things. Demons study your character. Demons study your movement. And sometimes... They know that you love to hear nice words. And they will tell you nice words in order to distract you from a mission that God has put you on. Watch this. Had Paul and Silas been distracted and said, oh, yes, yes, we are men of God. Yes, man. Oh, yes, you know. Oh, yeah, man, you know. Okay. They would have been distracted from the main thing. What happened? While she was saying the right thing, they did not say anything. But she followed them. And here comes a time when Paul identified the altar that he's speaking. So at sometimes there are some things that come at you that you may not identify the altar right away. Or you may not identify the spirit right away. But over time, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you, don't be distracted. Don't be sidetracked. Amen. And the Holy Spirit revealed to Paul. And Paul said, get out of her. In the name of Jesus Christ. And what happened? Immediately, the altar that was speaking was being affected. And the men draw, draw Paul and Silas and beat them, throw them into prison. Yes? And you know the story. All right. So blessed morning again for those who um joined me very late this morning. 
Amen. All right. Um, Sister Andrea, right, Minister of our Rose Williams, amen. Uh Evangelist Cardia, greetings. I have two iPhone underline, iPhone one, iPhone two. No, iPhone, one of the iPhone is Sister Susan. Greetings, woman of God. Good to see you. Amen. How is your son? I've been hearing him in a long while. Amen. Greetings. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Trust and hope that you and the family is well. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, let's go into our teaching. All right, so this morning we are talking about building spiritual altars to God. Amen. Now, I want to say to you, rebuilding the altar of prayer is very important. Amen. For some of us, I said, some of us have stopped praying. Some of us, for some of us, the prayer become a bird. For some of us, we are not consistent. Yes. And for some of us, we are not praying strategically. Now, prayer does not just change things. I want you to get that. Prayer does not just change things, but prayer has been proven to change things on every level. Yes? So although this may be true, many times people tend to use prayer as a last resort. Yes? When they are faced with a crisis or a stubborn dilemma. Do not wait until you are faced with a crisis. Do not wait until you are faced with a stubborn dilemma. That's the time you start to pray. Amen? Understand, right? Turning to the things of the world. Many a times when persons pray in crisis or in a stubborn dilemma, they never tend to move to what God wants them to do. They tend to move to something which is a quick fix. They tend to move to the world. Amen? So they tend to turn to the world rather than turning to God. Yes, there are many believers, uh, many persons that are going through a situation from time to time. And they will have some people that will tell them, oh, I have, I have a lady where you can talk to. And the lady start telling about Bart and all these things. Tell about Kangla and all these things. And they will tell you that they are men and women of God. And they will tell you that they are spiritual people. But one of the problems um, many of us have is that we are so caught up in prophecy that the enemy will tell us exactly what we want. Understand this. The enemy knows. The enemy can speak. Remember, the enemy is in the spirit. And we see it with the, with, with the girl with the spirit of divination. Yes, we see it manifest. All right, so in Jeremiah 1 verse 13, the Spirit of God lament. All right, and there are some things that you're going to have to write very quickly. Jeremiah 2 and verse 13. Yes, let's go to Jeremiah 2 verse 13. Remember always to follow the preacher within, in scriptures because we can only speak uh, the word of God. We cannot speak anything else. Jeremiah 2 and verse 13. What it says. It said, for my, oh, for my people. You see how God call us? Uh -huh. For my people have committed two evil. They have forsaken the fountain of the living waters. Remember, in the book of St. John chapter 4, God was at the well. Now, there are many of us who have forget or forgotten the fountain of living waters. Many of us need a refilling. Many of us need to be refilled. Many of us need to go back to the well. 
And I'm not talking about the well. Just as a woman, many of us are like, many of us as believers are like the woman. Many of us, many of us on this line this morning, or those who will watch later, are in a position where you feel bad to go to the well. And you cannot go to, all right, let's let, let put it in plain terms. You cannot go to church because of what persons are saying. You have a situation. It may not be you have um, five husbands, but you have a situation where um, persons in the church who should be encouraging you are the persons that are discouraging you, shutting you, criticizing you, and all that. And they too are at the well. They go to the well also go to draw water, just like you. But going to that well, yeah, you cannot go with them. They go early in the morning because they will ridicule you. They will criticize you, ostracize you, push you aside. But understand this. God have an appointment with you and I at the well. It is quite interesting, my brothers and sisters, that God would have said, it need N E E D is a necessity that I go through Samaria. This morning, you may be on this line and you may be dry, spiritually dry, spiritually dry. Maybe you're emotionally dry, maybe you're psychologically dry. And you need, again, to experience that flowing, that fountain of living water flowing from your belly again. Now, understand, the Bible says what? Jesus said to the woman, if you draw from that well, you will thirst again. But the water that I will give you will spring out of you living water. Now ask yourself the question, have you forsaken the fountain of living water? And anytime God said something, anytime God come to speak, he give a warning to someone. Yes? Have you forgotten? Amen? So look at this. So the Bible says, Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 9, 13, sorry is a scripture that you need to hold dear to your heart. For my people have committed two evil. They have one, they have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and as you and you down, you up them out, cistern, yes, broken cistern that can hold no water. Now, This may be sad for some of us. Some of us are broken. Sister, we cannot hold any water. It doesn't matter what the man of God said. It doesn't matter what the woman of God said. It doesn't matter what the child of God said. It doesn't matter what God is saying to you. You are broken. You cannot hold the world. Why? Because you have forsaken the living water. You don't want to wait on God. You don't want to... Hold on to God. You don't want to pray. You don't want to sacrifice anything. You don't want to make the sacrifice on the altar. You want somebody to just come and say, yes, this is going to happen. And this morning, you just get up and everything just changed. You don't want to have any experience, especially long suffering. Yeah. So, this may be sad, but so true. Not only have the people turned away from God, but tend to have greater confidence in the worldly system. We are seeing that happening. Yes? People and other carnal pursuits which are not able to bring them the solution or resolve they seek. 
so you are here. We are here morning after morning, night after night, seeking the Lord. And some person said, Mom, we can't bother waiting too long, giving up, throwing it. You left Egypt. Egypt was not good for you. Or yet still you want to go back to Egypt. Uh -huh. So they may experience a temp you may experience a temporary satisfaction out there. But at the end, you'll be you'll left feeling frustrated and confused. So there are many persons that left the church. There are many persons that left the ministry. There are many persons that even left this ministry. Because they could not wait. They left the church because they could not wait. They left the place of pride because they could not wait. They left the place where they should be studying the world because they could not wait. And even though the world, Satan, or the world offer you something and it's you seem satisfied. At the end, you will be frustrated, you will be depressed, and interestingly, you'll be confused. Now, in Isaiah in, in Psalm chapter 16 and verse 11, the Bible said, Thou will show me the path of life. Thou will show me the part of life in thy presence. Now, many a times we pull only one side part out of his text. And we say, in his presence, here's fullness of joy. Now, we need to get the first one. Only when you allow God to show you the part of life. Then you can get into his presence. Because the part of life leads you to the presence of God. The part of life that God chose for you leads you to the favor of God. The part of life that God chose for you leads you to the mercy of God. The part of life that God chose for you leads you to the anointing of God. So Psalm 16 and verse 11. He said, thou will show me personal pronoun. Are you allowing God to show you the part that you should travel? Are you allowing God to show you the part where you should go? Thou will show me the part of life. In his presence is fullness of joy. How can we I get fullness of joy when you allow the Spirit of God to show you the path of life? God, I'm going out this morning. You need to show me the path of life. God, I'm making this decision. You need to show me the path of life. God, I am about to pray. You need to show me the path of life. Because only in your presence, I can have fullness of joy. And only at your right hand, I will have pleasures forevermore. Now, in Psalm 16 and verse 11, my brothers and sisters, I believe that the psalmist came to the realization that the answer to living an abundant life, the answer to living an abundant life is in pursuing the presence of Almighty God. The psalmist get to this realization where the psalmist is saying, look, I want to have the abundant life. But understand that the psalmist said, in order for me to get that abundant life, I need you to show me the path of life. Now, the psalmist further states that the presence of God creates what? Peace and satisfaction that is not short-lived but forever. Understand when you quote these scriptures. 
pull from the text. Number one, allow the Holy Spirit, allow God to show you the path of life. Number two, it's only when God is showing you and directing you and leading you, God lead you to his presence. Many of us are looking for God to lead us in, 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 in great victories. And, and look, the presence of God is everything. Because the presence of God attracts favor. The presence of God attracts power. The presence of God attracts anointing. The presence of God attracts fire. The presence of God attracts protection. It's when you are in the presence of God, chains are broken. Bodies are healed. Sick are delivered. Mm -hmm. Demons are cast out. Yes? Mm -hmm. Dead things come to life. Only when you are in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. So the psalmist states that the presence of God creates peace and satisfaction. That is not short-lived. But what? It endures forever. People of God, the presence of God brings pleasures forevermore. It's not just now. Because many of us are just experiencing something now and say, oh, and every time, look here, it's, it's forevermore. It never ends. It's not short-lived. Now, I believe, my brothers and sisters, that the answer to all that the world is facing, especially in the, the crisis, the global crisis that we are experiencing right now, in every area, in every country, is to what? Turn back to God. Mm -hmm. And in the lives of many, my brothers and sisters, the altar of prayer needs to rebuild. Chosen and prophet every ministry. People of God, help us rebuild the altar. You need to rebuild the altar of pride. And it doesn't matter how you say, man of God, I pray. No, no, no. You need to get to the place. where you allow the Holy Spirit to give you instruction. Allow the Holy Spirit to direct you. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. Allow the Holy Spirit to unctionize you in rebuilding the altar of prayer. Some of the things that we are experiencing in our lives, some of it is because the altar has been broken down. And when the altar is broken down, the altar stops speak. So we understand an altar is a is a consecrated and dedicated place of sacrifice. An altar is a consecrated place, is a dedicated place, and it's a place of sacrifice. Where have you consecrated for your altar? Song we sing, I am thine, O Lord. You, under, you understand what the, the, the songwriter said in verse two of that in, in verse two of that song. He said, Consecrate me now, not yesterday. Not last night. Every time you sing that song, every time you minister to that, that song, that song is in its present tense. Huh? Consecrate me now. What are you saying? God set me apart. Build this altar. I'm going into prayer. God set me apart. Huh? Consecrate me now. Two, before I can do any service, uh -huh, before I can do any service for you, I need to be consecrated. 
Now, there are many of us as pastors, ministers, apostles, priests, or worship leaders, you name them, we are doing things, we are doing service without consecration. God said to Joshua, when they were about to cross over Jordan, God knows that in order for the presence of God, in order for the power of God, in order for the favor of God, in order for the deliverance of God, it takes a consecrated life to enter into that promise. God said to, in Joshua 3, 5, God said to Joshua, tell the officers, you see how important it is for the ministers in the church? Now, even right there, you can see the, tra the chain of command in effect. Now, remember there were 12 tribes. And there were leaders of the 12 tribes. Just as 12 tribes 12, the 12 leader for the 12 tribe was sent to spy out the land. And 10 came back with a negative report. Amen. Understand this. The bishop said to the ministers, and that was who um, uh, um, Joshua was. He was the leader. He was the bishop. He said, tell to the officers, tell your people, tell those who you are, in, you are leading to sanctify themselves. Consecrate yourself. Because tomorrow you will cross over Jordan. Before they could cross over, a consecration had to take place. Now understand. You may be on the line. And there's a thing maybe you may be going through. And God is saying, look, in order for you to get insight, in order for me to reveal to you, in order for you to get knowledge, you need to consecrate yourself. Yeah? So the Sower to said, consecrate me now to thy service, Lord. By the power of praise divine, let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in your will. Amen. So an altar is what? A consecrated place. Number two, am I dedicating myself to prayer? Now, we dedicate ourselves to go to job. We dedicate ourselves to do this. And we dedicate ourselves to do that. Right? Yes. But do you dedicate yourselves at the place of prayer? Hmm? Your prayer altar needs dedication. Our prayer altar needs dedication. Yes, our prayer altar needs um, dedication. Yes, our prayer altar needs um, dedication. Amen. So we need to what? Dedicate ourselves at the place of prayer. The next, the next thing that we need to do is to sacrifice. What sacrifice are you giving? Is your all, the songwriter declared, at the altar of sacrifice laid. Paul tells us in Romans 12, 1, to present our bodies as living sacrifice. Now, the question you and I need to ask ourselves, are we really presenting our bodies as living sacrifice? Or are we just quoting the scripture? Are we just saying it because, yes, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a right thing to say. It is God's words, it's the right thing to say. But the question is, are you applying this principle to your life? Am I applying this principle to my life? Am I really a living sacrifice? Hmm? 
am I really a living sacrifice? And these are questions that we have to ask ourselves. We, 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 yes, we love the excitement. And we love when we hear a man of our man of God and woman of God pray and they they, they put these um so nice that you're like, wow, it blows your mind. But the fact of the matter is, am I a living sacrifice to the Lord? When we talk about sacrifice, many times we find persons talk about sacrifice. And they tell you, give a sacrificial offering. But what about you giving your sacrificial self to the Lord? <laughs> what about you giving yourself to the Lord? I yet to hear, it may have been said, but I yet to hear a pastor or minister or evangelist or whatever, I yet to hear that. And that's it. It's not happening. Said to the people, we are going to offer our sacrifice, ourselves. We are going to get into prayer and we're going to pray. It's not about money. It's not about your accolades. It's not about your, 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 your position. We are going to for ourselves. We are going to put ourselves on the altar and we are going to pray because we are declaring that enough is enough. But when it always comes to these things, even when the Lord is giving a direction in that place, people turn it and say, oh, give a sacrificial offering and watch a breakthrough come. You cannot pay your way into the presence of God. The ministry needs your money or the ministry needs your finance in order to function. People need L, yes, um, light bill, water bill, all those stuff need to pay, right? Amen. For the ministry. Amen. Right? And, you know, all that. Right? But the main thing that we emphasize on or the main thing that I emphasize on, let's speak for myself, is that you present your bodies as living sacrifice. So you present your body. So prior is your communication or communion with God. Prior is your communication or communion with God. All right. So James chapter 5 and verse 16 said, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avail it much. The effective. Now, all of us are praying for you. I am praying but is your prayer effective? I am praying for my family. I'm not sure to pray for my family. But the question I have to ask myself, is that prayer effective? You are praying for your church. Is that prayer effective? How strategic are you in getting result from God. How strategic are you in allowing the Holy Spirit to direct your prayer so you can see result and you can experience the manifestation of God? So there are some things that we need, we need to write. Are we ready? Are you ready? All right. Nobody writing. Very good. Now, in order yes, to build... <laughs> in, yes, uh, you know, 
it, it's not like it's not like a man on TikTok, right? You don't have to write this one. <laughs> I still tell you what to write. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Yes. So in order to rebuild the altar of prayer, or to pray effectively, we must first come to reali the realization that we were seeking after the wrong things. In order to rebuild the altar of prayer, or to pray effectively, we must first come to the realization that even though we say we're praying, even though we say we're prophesying, even though we say we're preaching, and it's some goods and some person feel encouraged and empowered, we were what? Seeking after the wrong things. Our motives was wrong. There, there, there is something that to break down the altar. Motive, self-ambition, self-righteousness, desire for self, break down the altar. It's no longer thy will be done. It's your will, it, it, it's, it's, it's my will be done. It's no longer God will be done. It's or it will be done. And that breaks the altar down. And as Solomon tells us very interesting in Proverbs 3, 5, he said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lead not to your own understanding. Because while you are there at the altar, you need God understanding. Because your understanding and my understanding is limited. So in order to rebuild this altar of prayer, we have to come to the realization that we were seeking after the wrong things and that the presence of God in our lives is now our ultimate priority. And once you embrace this revelation, my brothers and sisters, we can now seek to rebuild the altar of prayer by observing these things. Number one, the first thing in order to rebuild your altar, the first thing we have to do is to repent. In rebuilding the altar, the first thing we have to do is to repent. We must first have a mind or a change of mind and make a firm decision that we will do what it, whatever it takes to turn back to God and to stay in God. I repeat that. The first thing we need to do in rebuilding our altar is to repent. We must first have a change of mind and make a firm decision that what, whatever, that whatever, that we'll do whatever it takes to turn back to God, and not only to turn back to God, but this time stay in God. Are we together now? Yes, sir. Number two. Number two. We need to, re in rebuilding the altar, we need to refocus. We need to refocus our lives and forget anyone or anything that seeks to distract us from moving forward in our pursuit of developing a consecrated prior life. Number two, in order to rebuild the altar, we need to refocus our life and forget anyone or anything that seeks to distract us from moving forward in our pursuit of developing a consecrated prior life. Now, there are many things, there are many persons that are distracting us from developing a consecrated prior life. All 
Are we together now? Yes, sir. Number three. Number three. We need to release. We need to release. Number three, we need to release and let go of past issues and disappointment that may keep us from the presence of God. People of God, if you start, if you continue to dwell in your past, it will keep you out of the presence of God. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 18, God would have said to the children of Israel, through the man's servant, Isaiah, he said, remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old, right? Because if you continue to remember the former things, consider the things of old, you will never experience the new thing that God has for you. Release. Yes, Pastor Stephen Mike can, but release him. Oh, yes, my mother did not treat me well. Release her. Oh, my father did not do me well. Release them. Oh, my husband did not treat me right. Release him. And when I say release him, I tell him to, 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 I'm not telling anybody to go and divorce or no. That's what I'm saying. I, what I'm saying is that you know up to now, look and say, God, give me the strategy. Give me the insight. Give me the revelation to deal with this altar. Because what the past does is distract you from the future. So you find out that now the enemy is robbing you of the victory that you should have. The enemy is robbing you of the victory that you should have. And the only thing that the enemy can bring at you is your past, not your future. So release and let go. You are rebuilding the altar. Release and let go of past issues and disappointments. Yes, I've been disappointed many a times. But in order to stay in the presence of God, release that. You may keep that because all these things will keep you from the presence of God. Amen. Number four, and we are closing shortly. We are landing shortly. Amen. Realign yourself. For those who have vehicle or no vehicle, right, there's a time if you, the vehicle have to go in alignment. Because it will be swinging, swinging to one side and it can be dangerous. Now, many of us are swinging to one side or we are swinging to side of the road. Amen. So realign yourself with the will of God by making prayer, fasting, study of the word, a priority in your life. I repeat, realign yourself with the will of God by praying, number one. Number two, by studying the word. Number three, by fasting. These three keys are very important in building or rebuilding your altar. You need prayer, you need a word, and you need fasting. Prayer give you communication. The word give you um, guidance, insight, revelation. You know it. Yes? Fasting kill the flesh. Realign yourself with the will of God by making prayer, fasting, and studying the word a priority in your life. Number five. We need to reestablish set times of prayer and remain faithful to them. When you were going through, you were going through. There were some times where you said, with them time there, you just got prayer. Whether you're there at work, whether you're there on the road, you never take long, 
you're praying in your spirit. But as soon as we get over the situation, we start praying. I even sometimes God nudge us and say, you know, I say, oh, I can't pray now. Atmospheric, so I said, no. Pray. There are many of us that God is calling like Adam. 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 We are at thou. Because what? We have neglected the place of prayer. Number five, reestablish. Right? Remember something was established before. Everybody on this line have a season in their life when they were praying for God for something and they never stopped praying until that come true, including myself. And what I need, what we need to do, I you uh, look here. I, I'm trying to get back in consistent. There was a time in my life, and I'm being completely honest. Three o'clock every morning, I was up. That was the time I was praying. And over time, I locked that time. Yes, understand. Praying three o'clock in the morning, God give you insight. You are able to. Deal with things that the enemy would have planted in your atmosphere, planted in your family, planted along your way. Amen. And God will download spiritual insight at a particular time to deal with some things. Now, anytime you miss those times, because the enemy knows, because always greater and greater revelation comes. Because God Deal with you at the level that you can comprehend and understand. And as you as we gradually stay in his presence, just like going to school, you go to um, Kibna Gardner Basic School, and you are able to understand at that level. Then you go to prep school or primary school, and there is a level there that you understand. Then you go to high school, are, there's a level there that you understand. Yes? And for some, go to six farm. Not everybody graduates to that level. Not everybody goes to that level. Some people stop at high school. Amen? Or some people tell themselves, no, I cannot go up to that level. Some people would love to go to university, but they limit their level. Because I believe that you have to be brilliant, you have to be this, you have to be that. And again, the universities as well lift the bar that you have to be the best to come here. Or you have to have these criteria or these subject area you have to be um, because they don't want to, they want to take you from that level higher. Because they expect that based on your ears going through this is school, primary school, all this school. You would have gone up a level of understanding that when the, when these things come, you are able to understand them. So it is in the natural. So it is in the spiritual. There are many persons in church for years and still at kindergarten level. Mm -hmm. They don't graduate here. And that's okay. We, we, we have to help you now to understand. And that's why this ministry is about educating, empowering, equipping, and edifying. Because at whatever level you are, you are still able to comprehend and understand what the Spirit of God is saying. So we don't come here, as Paul said, with excellent speech and eloquent speech. No, we come want to let you understand that at whatever level you are, you need to grow in God. You need to grow. Amen. So you and I need to now reestablish. So at that time, and I'm lucky in that year, three o'clock in the morning. And any time I need that time to hear from God is no. Because the assignment is greater. Amen. Because if you fail, it simply means that I have failed. So while the pastor may, may look and, 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 and our pastors may look at you and tell you, oh, um, it's because of the members, just like Saul. 
Remember Saul? Yes. When Saul was sent to Abimelech, Saul was the leader. Yes. If Saul fails, the people fail. What did Saul do? did? Because Saul failed, the people fail. How did the people fail, man of God? Okay. The people take back the animals. The people take back the king. And what else them take back? Because what? Saul failed to follow a simple instruction that was given. There are many churches today. While they may look big, while they may look and you may look and say, yes, oh, yeah, man, things are going good and thick. The church is failing because the, the pastor or the bishop has failed to carry out a simple instruction that God gave him. Did they not have, have sheep and cattle? Yes. Did they not have things? Yes. And you and I would have looked on that as prosperity. And so it is in the body of Christ. Right? There are many people look at this because what? The people have things in the church that God said to destroy. People have accursed things in the church. People have accursed things around and the world is in the church. Because what? The pastor and the bishop allow it. Because he fails, the people fail. And you understand then that when Samuel went to him and said, Saul, did you do everything that God told you to do? He started to blame the people. He said, the people take up this animal for sacrifice. Who fails? Saul failed. And that is what is happening to many leaders. Is that they tend to blame the members or the, the people in the congregation for their failure. And that is why leadership in the body of Christ is a very, very serious task. So it's very important as believers that you pray for your leaders. Pray that they follow the instruction that God has given them. Not their instruction. Even though this ministry is being run and functioned by a board of directors. There are things that God will say to me that I, I have to do. I cannot ask board to vote on that. <laughs> as much as it is a board, we, 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 we come together as a board and we talk, I cannot. If God give the instruction, I cannot go to board. If we want to do some things that will will help to enhance and build the ministry. That's okay. Because different people get different revelation. And that's why it's good to come together. But if God look at me and the leader, just as God said to, to Sam, Saul, to a man servant, Samuel, go down to Abimelech. Kill everything. It's a baby kid. Kill everything. Amen. I don't know who advised it. That was a command from God. He didn't need to go to the priest. He didn't need to go to anybody. That was a command that God gives. And he was supposed to carry out that command. Amen. So we have to, we have to understand these things. Amen. We have to understand them. So any, any ministry that you are in. And the pastor fail. Church fail. When the pastor win, the church win. And that is the reason why we sacrifice our time to ensure that we all win together. So Paul would have said, follow me. As I follow Jesus. Amen. So reestablish set times of prayer and be faithful to them. You're faithful to go into the master of no. Yes, man. You're faithful every morning. 
Yes, Sister Andrea, go ahead. Blessed morning, blessed morning. Greetings, sir. Greetings, brethren. Quick question for you. Um, if you're not um filled, is it safe to pray at that time of the morning? Because that's deep warfare time. <laughs> that's a good question. What is the meaning of being filled? Well, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Are you going to tell me that being filled with the Holy Spirit means speaking in tongues? That's what you're going to tell me, right? Well, pretty much that's what I have as far as understanding. I mean, I no. know you I know I know the Holy Spirit lives within you. So I know you always have the Holy Spirit, but I mean as far as having, you know, the advanced levels to be able to, you know, uh uh fight war fear to be able to do things differently and even in a stronger you know way that's from my understanding anyway wonderful good question you ask there is a doctrine that is out there that is we as theologians or some theologians take this doctrine and put it into their doctrine they put their they don't exegese the text. They what? They exegese the text. They put their own meaning to it. And that's the reason why we are here teaching. Now, the, the uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit is that necessarily speaking in tongues is a gift. The Holy Spirit is a person. Get that. The Holy Spirit is a person. Speaking in tongues is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah? Now, being filled with the Holy Spirit, it simply means, yes, that you will be able, yes, to allow the Holy Spirit of God to direct every area and aspect of your life. The Holy Spirit of full control over your will, your thoughts, and your emotions. Okay? The Holy Spirit is a person. The question I want to ask all those who add speaking in tongues, speaking in your heavenly language is good. The Pentecostals or the Apostolic believes that if you don't speak in tongues, you don't feel with the Holy Ghost. That's not true. And I will ask them the question. When Jesus was here on earth, did he speak in tongues? We're in scriptures. In Jesus three and a half years that he was here on earth. Where did you see that Jesus speaking in an unknown tongue? Show me, and I repent. But make sure you have scriptures. He could have said to the disciples in St. John, he could have said to them, when the Spirit come upon you, you'll speak in tongues. He could have said that. Right there. And he would have speaking in tongues then, but he said to them, it's, it, it's important that I go. And I will send you another comforter who will guide you into what? All truth. Being filled with the Holy Spirit means that you are guided into all truth. Paul himself, all right, so you, you want to dispute speaking, people want to dispute speaking in tongues. Let's help you again. Paul asks a question. Does all speak in tongues? No. He asks that question. As it relates to speaking in tongues, we can look in uh, in, 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 in Corinthians chapter 12, um, 12. Okay. Paul also go a bit further. The issue that we have with speaking in tongues and all these things, in, in look and in verse 30, he said two things in verse 30. At first Corinthians chapter 30. He said, if you have our faith. If you have all this, if you have all that and have like, have, have, let, let's read that. I don't misquote anything. Here. Yeah. 
1 Corinthians 13. So you go and pray, oh man of God. Don't let nobody tell you when to is a Holy Spirit tell you when to pray, how to pray, what to pray. Yeah. Not, not even me can tell you how to pray, what to pray. My wife is, is here. You think I can tell my wife how to pray what to pray now? I know that. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. One of the problems with the body of Christ is that every I find out that we as ministers are trying to do the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit don't want to help, yeah. Don't want to help. First Corinthians 13, so what? What is it? Paul said, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity. So there are many people that are speaking in tongues but don't have love. But yet still they say, This is a characteristic of being filled with the Holy Spirit, don't it? Okay, wonderful. Huh? Wonderful. Wonderful. Being filled with the Holy Spirit of God. You, you treat, you, it shows you how you treat people. If you want to know how somebody being filled with the Holy Ghost, look how they treat people. Look how they treat people. Yes, Minister Eileen, go ahead. Bishop, good morning. Good morning. Um, as you were talking about speaking in tongues and speaking in tongues, filling with the Holy Ghost is the word of God. When you fill with the word and the truth and the knowledge, like uh, you have the fruit of the spirit. But speaking in tongues is a evidence to show that you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. So, um, so um, you're talking Scripture. about in Corinthian, Corinthian 12. Corinthians yeah. 12. If you yeah. walk right to Corinthians 12, you will hear the Bible speak about tongues and mm -hmm. different different gifts, but it's yeah. the same body. It's the same body. So you yes. have to take our through the scripture of it and that she can get the, the, the get more understanding, being mm -hmm. that she don't understand. But um the way you're explaining to her, it's like it's well, if speaking in tongues is not relevant, yes, it do relevant because yes, it's not because relevant. Huh? I, didn't say, I didn't say it's not relevant. Um, you should be with that now. Mm, yeah, so um, so I just saying, want to say that. Okay, what I'm saying okay. is That's a gift. Everybody don't speak. All right, so. What will we say then? If we ask this question then. So if somebody don't speak in tongues, you're not going to heaven? Not literally, sir. I don't say that. I don't it's say that. But, but as to much me. as as much as um you um you you do you you have the word you need the holy words as well, because both of them work together. Father God, I understand what I said, but what I'm saying to you. It's not a right? time for you to be arguing on the phone. Okay. You need to be paying attention. You need to pull up all down. Did Jesus, all right, the question is, did Jesus speak in tongues in the trail now to hear that he was on earth? Oh, but yeah, there were. You know what? We have to get one time, one time. We have to come on this issue. This is a topic by itself that we want to deal with. Because there's a misconception out there, right? Right, that all these things are happening. See, Evangelist Claudia said, people are saying, if you don't speak in tongues, yeah, there are people out there that say all of that, and it confuses people. Look, the body of Christ, people have got, the body of Christ is one of the most confused, and the enemy use confusion to mess us up. Because the body of Christ is it all our, our religion is the only place, yes, where we cannot have a common ground. We have some common ground and prayer. We have some common ground, but we don't have all kind of common ground. And that is where the enemy right? will we'll, 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 we'll mess up. Many, many, many people, many believers. 
right? Jesus Christ. Right? Let me, let me go through, 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 through. All right, let me, let me look at the book of Acts a bit. Right, there are three parts in the book of Acts. Talk about um one of the problems what, what that people you, you hang up again in Sahelin, or it was up for a long time. Or you did talk already. All right. One of the things that people, the first thing that people need to understand is the work of the Holy Spirit. There are many believers who don't understand or know the work of the Holy Spirit. None at all. Because the only doctrine they know at all is that the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. That's it. That's all they know. They don't know the work of the Holy Spirit. Right? They don't know the work of the Holy Spirit. Right? Attribute of the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit is a person. In order for any child of God to get saved, the Holy Spirit has to convict them. The Holy Spirit has to convict them. The Bible said, No man come to Jesus unless the Spirit draw them. So there are some things that we, we, we need to talk about. We're, we're going to set a time and we're going to deal with it. We're going to take it in our discussion. Never. I'm going to see if I can set it. Amen. For Friday. For this Friday. See if we can get no, the discussion. No, sir. Change that date, please. Change that date, please. To have a rally. Please change that date. I want to All right. Miss Sir, Miss Sir, for you. Miss Sir, for you. Miss Sir, for you. It's an urgent. It's an urgent thing that we have to deal with. So, Miss Sir, for you. Catch it on YouTube. Do it tonight. <laughs> no, no, tonight is not my night, really. Tonight is Pastor Nelson's night. He's coming back tonight. Right? We, we try Friday to deal with it. Yeah? We're going to go into discussion. We're going to get, get some, 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 um, a, a, a discussion, a panel discussion. And we're going to deal with this issue that persons can get clarity. Eh? That persons can get clarity because this is an era where the believers are confused. There are many believers that are confused. Many, many believers that are confused. Bible, can't do it, but let me say, can't do it, sir. let me say, photo. Amen. Let me finish this and close out. <laughs> Friday. Amen. Glory to God. Friday. And who don't catch it on YouTube and so catch it on YouTube. Rewatch it. Glory to God. Amen. Let me finish. Let, let, me, let me finish. Let me finish um this and, and close. Right? Time is far spent. All right. So number five, we said risk we establish. We are going to set it up. I'm going to uh, as I come out this one, I'm going to call Pastor Bishop Nelson. Now I'm going to call all the pastors. Right? Um See if I can get um see if I can get um Pastor Byfield, see if we can get some person panel discussion. Right, so we understand. And we go in scriptures. We don't want nobody, we don't want when nobody think, we don't want when nobody believe, and when nobody the thing said, and when the person we don't want that. We want scripture. This is the scripture that said this is what the scripture do, and what the scripture. We don't want an eisegesis. We want the scripture being exegesis. Mean pulling from the text. What is the context of it? Because there are many persons out there that are teaching, but they don't know. And they teach what somebody else tell them, and they teach something else. Right? Tomorrow, Friday, yes. <laughs> Amen. Let's finish this. Amen. So we have number five. We have a whole part of what? Look at what? Catch it on YouTube. We don't catch it. It's done YouTube. Amen. All right. So number five, we said what? Re-establish a set time of prayer and remain faithful. Oh my God, Sir Andrea. God wake you up for prayer. Pray. Don't let nobody tell you about a warfare and something. Look here. You don't have to fight in this battle. It's God, it's God deal with warfare, not you. 
you are fighting for a place of victory. I'm mean, not about to tell you nothing. All you need to do is come in alignment with what God says. That's it. All believers are fighting for a place of victory. We are not defeated. Don't let nobody let, 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 let um, you being a believer make it look hard. No, you're fighting for a place of victory. All you need to do is stand on the word of God, the promises of God, and whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do. That's it. And scriptures show us, right? Second Chronicles 20 is a very, very powerful scripture. Very powerful scripture. When the army was coming up against Jehoshaphat, what did, what did they do? They have to depend on God to lead them. What did God tell them to do? Praise and worship. One of the problems why we are losing in spiritual warfare is that we want to, because somebody says, oh, fight that way. We want to fight that way too. That's not different people, different situation, different result, different instruction. Second Chronicles 20. Different instruction. My wife and I, we may be going through different warfare. You think say, my wife come and say, um, um, babes, you know, say this is what's happening. I'm going to tell her, oh, no, this is all you're doing. That's all you're doing. No. It's simply me now. I'm taking the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit know how to deal with the warfare. The Holy Spirit know how to deal with the thing. All you need to do is listen and follow instruction. We are persons. We are in scriptures. And I want people to show me. We are in scriptures. They show you that you have to be in this and be in that to, 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 to pray. We are in scripture. These are things I don't want people to tell me what they think and what people tell them. Show me in scripture, say, all right, this, the Bible says, St. John something said, you have to be at this level, you have to be at that, you have to speak in tongues, you have to have all that in order for going to prayer. And then me, me agree with you. But I don't want persons to come and tell me that, um, oh, um, Bishop, you know, this is all it happened. I don't want, I want no scripture, scripturally. Show me your scripture. Say, look here, this is what you do in this time. Because that is what is messing us up. Persons come and persons tell us, oh, this is what is happening. And this is all you need. I want to tell you, look, it's not even scriptural. It's not scriptural. None at all in a scriptural. It sounds good, yes. It may give some insight, yes. But it's not scriptural. Jesus has been through warfare. Holy for warfare. And he is our example. How did he deal with them? Paul have been through warfare. How did he deal with them? There was a time when Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you, more than anybody else. But I don't, I don't speak in tongues. I prefer to speak in five words that people can understand. Because what is happening also is that the Corinthian church is not operating now. Everybody's speaking in tongues. Competition. Nobody is interpreted. And when you find out, you find out that everybody is divided. Because some is for Paul, some is for Jesus, some is for Apollos, some is for Peter. Everybody divided. So everybody is speaking in tongues. And everybody has looked to somebody else. We are living in the Corinthian church. That was the same issue, the same speaking in tongues that Paul had to tell. And, and the woman was the problem at that particular time. The woman, they were the problem. They were the problem at the time. Everybody was, was and, he said, and, and he had to say, oh, oh stop. When you go home, give it the husband. Don't, 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 don't confuse the church. Make, make your husband explain to you when you go home. That was the context of the thing. Read it. Read it and you'll see it. Read First Corinthians. Read it, read it and you'll understand it. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you what is in scripture. And that's why persons take it on as even as a doctrine or as a woman of his speak in a church. You see that? People take and that is man-made doctrine. Woman of his 
but there was an era, it, it was a particular situation that he was addressing. It was a letter that was written to Paul as it relates to the behavior that was happening to the church or what was going on in the church. And he write and answer the letter, how it should be, how, how, what should be done. One of the things that we need to do is to get a hold of the letters that was written to Paul while he was in prison. I would have seen some of the same thing the church is experiencing now. Then we are experiencing it now. And that's where the Holy Spirit now work now. Because we write to the Holy Spirit and we talk to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, we need insight in this. People of God, we need to get back to the Bible. Back to the Bible. We need to start studying the word of God. Even Acts 1 chapter 8 is a big problem because everybody believes that um, speaking in tongues, uh, having the Holy Ghost there is speaking in tongues. No, the Bible tell you, read it. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it says, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, everybody have the Holy Spirit and someone are not witnessing. But you don't have the Holy Spirit. Look at that. Look at that. Everybody will tell you, oh, I have the Holy Spirit, pastor. Who you witness to on a daily basis? You know, witness to your family. You know, witness to nobody when you come in contact with, but you have the Holy Spirit. These are issues that I have. I am studying now, and I understand uh, God is giving me revelation. The, the Holy Spirit there is to witness. He said, when the Holy Spirit come upon you, you shall be witness. Holy Spirit will come upon everyone, uh, uh, a whole away at their time, and nobody witnessing. As simple as even sending out the link, to, to other person can drive, not even that the Holy Spirit can, you don't have no witness to do. Look at that. Eh? As simple as just taking a phone and sending the link, but yet still we have the Holy Spirit. Think about it, people of God. Think about it. As simple as you have holy people in a phone, have you just send out the link, join the Zoom, but yet still we have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit come upon you to witness. Read the, read the Bible. Study the scriptures. Understand the work of the Holy Spirit. That's the problem we have. We don't know the work of the Holy Spirit. And it's not being taught. And because it's not being taught, it's a problem in the body of Christ. You have to continue. If I don't send out the link, some people don't come and so. <laughs> yeah. If I if I look on say and I send out the link, I'll be, uh, some people don't come and yeah. Why are you going to stop? No, you continue. I, amen. Don't stop. Amen. All right, let's finish this. Time, time, time. Prospect. We deal with it um tomorrow. We deal with it tomorrow. Amen. All right. So, number five is that we must re establish. Set time for prayer and remain faithful to them. Yes. Number six, this is our era, right? Where we need to get into the Bible now. Remove ourselves from people, places, and practices which may challenge our commitment to prayer. Study the word and walk with God. There are some people that we are around, even though they are, they say they are believers. Look here. They are hindrance to your growth. They are hindrance to you maturing in Christ. Remove yourself from people. Come out from among them. Be separated. Sometimes you have to get yourself from some place. Sometimes you have to get yourself from some practices. Because some of the practices that they are telling us to do, they are man-made practices. They are not built scriptural. People of God. And in, in, order we, in order for us to be coming out of bondage, we are sinking ourselves deeper into bondage because we are looking at man-made practices and never what God instructed us to do. I know that this ministry will be controversial for many. 
and many persons will not like it. But yes, still we are sticking to the man. We are sticking to the mandate of educating the people who want to take it. Yes, edifying the people, empowering the people, and equipping the people. We are not falling short of that. Because some of the misconceptions, some of the wrong doctrine, some of the doctrine of devils that is teaching up here, we are here to ensure we open your eyes to these things. And the choice is yours. Mm -hmm. Remove yourself from people, place, or practices which may challenge your commitment to prayer, study of the word, and your walk with God. People will stop you in these three areas. One, in prayer. Two, in study of the word. Three, in your walk with God. Examine your circle. Examine your association. Examine the people and take for yourself. If you are around believers, people of God, and you are not seeing growth, they are not Encouraging you, they are not, they are not strengthening you, they are not praying with you. Look here, take for yourself. And if you are trying to encourage a man and tell you they don't want to, take for yourself. Take for yourself. Simple. In order to save your salvation, in order to be in alignment with God. Uh, we talked about yesterday, it takes a life of separation. It's scriptural. You see, we talk scriptures. We can go back to scripture. Yes, that's how we teach. And that's how I want person, when that person come and they are challenged by saying something, show me scripture. Mo um, Abraham had to get to a place of separation. Moses had to get to a place of separation. David had to get to a place of separation. Paul have to get to a place of separation. The disciples have to get to a place of separation. Any man or woman of God that is used by God have to go through a period or season of separation. Anybody you see, there's nobody you see in scripture that does not have a story of separation. Even Jesus himself Go through his Jesus himself, his 100% man and 100% God. And after he was baptized, he went into separation. 40 days, 40 nights. Scripture. Said Matthew chapter 4. If you want God to use you, if yes, you sing the song, Jesus use me, don't refuse me, surely there is no work that I can do. But you are still around people, you are still in places, you are still doing practices that does not glorify God. And God is saying, yes, I want to use you. Yes, I want to give you deliverance. Yes, I want to give you victory. Yes, I want to give you favor. But you need to separate yourself. God is calling us, people of God, to a place of separation where he can minister to us, where he can speak to us, where he can direct us, where he can lead us, where he can unctionize us, where he can anoint us as he anointed David. When Samuel was at the house of Jesse, the oil did not turn. He said, you know, I have no more. He said, yes, we have one. Roddy. In other bush, separation. Separation. In before Moses could lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, who was he looking after? Sheep. Separation. God was teaching him how to deal with sheep. Before David could 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 could, could lead the children of Israel, what happened? Eh? He was dealing with sheep. Look at it. Jesus himself come here. And he said what? I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice. And another day will not hear. He was dealing with what? Sheep. He said he left the 99 and go for the one. Sheep. Look at that. These are, 
These are things in ministry and building up the kingdom that we need to understand. Not what people think, but what Jesus did. He shows us how we should manifest. All right, one more. And we should, one more. Restore. Restore your relationship with the true God and make him and his will for your life all the ultimate priority. Number seven, restore your relationship with the one true God and make him and his will for your life your ultimate priority. So number one, in rebuilding the altar, we need to repent. Number two, in rebuilding the altar, we need to refocus. Number three, in rebuilding the altar, we need to release. Rebuilding the altar, number four, realign. Rebuilding the altar, number five, reestablish. Re 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 rebuilding the altar, number six, remove. And rebuilding the altar, number seven, restore. See where restoration come in? After you have repented, after we have refocused, after we have released, after we have realigned ourselves, after we have established, after we have removed some things, restoration comes in. Many of us are looking for restoration and we don't repent. Many of us are looking for restoration with our focus. Many of us are looking for restoration with our release. Many of us are looking for restoration with our realign. Many of us are looking for restoration with our remove or reestablish. But we want restoration. Restoration. Restore. Restore. Number seven. Restore your relationship with the one true God. And make him God and God's will your ultimate priority for your life. Amen. Amen. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Everybody vexed with me? No, no, sir. Nobody not vexed with you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Bless your bishop. Ah, uh, gee. You no, know, it's just me, man. No, sir. You no, know, it's just writing, writing. Just writing, mm -hmm. sir. Because the writing. <laughs> you see, you see, uh, people of God, just, you see, it's when it comes to, 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 to the things of God, I'm passionate. And myself as well was taught wrong until now I am getting the understanding of some things. I was taught. That's why I ensure when I come on this line, I study and ensure that Christ, God is speaking and you can see it through scriptures. You can look in the scriptures. You can see that it is written. It is written in the volume of the book. Because for too long for years, we have listened, we have, we have digested man-made doctrine and the body of Christ believed. Amen. And people coming to, sinners are afraid to come to Christ. Why? Because we make um, Christianity look like it's hard. Yes. We make it look like it's difficult. And even in living we can't explain to nobody because we're self-confused. Huh? Yes. And even when unsafe comes to us and asks us some question, and because we are confused, them are also confused. Kenesha. The are confused. Because we cannot properly explain we cannot tell them to through scriptures. We cannot show them. And we say things based on what we were taught. You see, you see, I would love many of you to get the opportunity to, to witness to a Rastaman. I have gotten that opportunity. Yes? And to God be the glory. 
we have all come to one common ground. Yeah? Because one of the things is that they know the scriptures and they will tie you up. One thing, understand this, and I'm talking about the real one in that study. They have the law of the text, not the spirit of the text. And that is why many believers cannot witness to nobody. Because, because many of the persons have the law of the text. And you neither have the law nor the spirit. You, you tell them that they are rebelling against God. No. Because they want also, they are seeking answers. Because they themselves are confused. Mm -hmm. And it's when your Holy Spirit allows you to properly explain to them that's when their confusion is laid to rest and they come to understanding people of God. And that is the reason why you cannot witness without the Spirit of God leading, directing, and guiding you. Because you will plead the blood on people. And I've seen it many a times. People trying to witness to people and they talk to them and they talk to them and say, blood of Jesus against them and all these things. Why? That's ignorance. Because had you allowed the Holy Spirit to witness to you and deal with you, you would have better able to minister and witness to them. People have got one of the characteristics of being filled with the Holy Spirit is to witness, and we are not doing that. I tell you, check Acts 1 8. That's the first assignment they get out of Pentecost, not to preach a word. Check it in your Bible. The first assignment that God gave them after Pentecost was to witness. Check it. After they finished praying and the Holy Spirit come upon them like a dove, amen, and they were endued with power from an eye, the first assignment is to witness. And for many persons, the first assignment for them is to speak in tongues. <laughs> you shall be witness. <laughs> Amen. And we are not witnessing. Simply mean that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, you have people out there that will tell you, they will teach you how to speak in the tongues. That's false. There are many persons in church that five, six, seven, eight people have the same tongues. People copy tongues. And some people are some church because they've been there for years. And people say they're not feeling the Holy Spirit. They start speaking at, in, 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 in tongues and speaking around. They're not speaking. What? Mm -hmm. Look here, man. God is going to rise up some interpreters in the church, you see? As you see, even some of us, we are shama, shama, kill mosquito. The Holy Spirit of us says, shut up. Shut up. That's how people are going to run left church now. <laughs> you think people run left church yet? That's when people are going to run left church. But you know what? They are interpreters that are afraid to tell people. And then talk among themselves. Wait, man. God is going to rise up some people. But well, they're afraid of your eye. They're afraid of your mouth. They're afraid of your cut eye. They're afraid of nothing. And then tell them, shut up. Shut up. And stop disturbing the service. And wait until you are endued with power from an eye. Shut up. That's where you're going to see the church of God different. Because this is affecting the body of Christ. Especially for all churches that believe. Look here, we a God, look here, 
God said to the disciples, wait until you're in you. Yeah, man, wait. Some it may take months, but some it may take weeks, but some it may just take the same hour. It depends. That is all up to the Holy Spirit. No pastor, no bishop, no apostle, no prophet cannot tell you, say, I know you can speak in tongues. No, 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 no. Say, Holy Spirit, do that. See another thing where people will be worshiping and people praying. Are people saying something and then telling people, oh, speak in a heavenly language now. The Bible says when the Holy Spirit come upon you, where you get that? Where you get that from? We find that scripture on the that. Where in scripture do you see any of the prophets, any of the any of the apostles is ministering and they tell the people them to speak speaking our tongues now? Where? Show me scripture and verse. And we see these things happening in church. See by persons who should have been learned. Or oh, speak in heaven language now. The Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit come upon you. When that person said, you hear people just burst out in their tongues. And you hear people just, people just, people just, people just. You see it in a scripture. Many person will say to me, oh, man of God, not because it was not written in scripture doesn't mean that this is not true. So where, what are we going by? What is written in the scripture? Are what men say. The Bible is my final authority. It is my basic instruction before leaving earth. And if I can see it scriptural, the Bible said nothing is new under the sun. Nothing is new under the sun. Nothing is new under the sun. So it is in the beginning, so it is in the end. We need to get back to Bible, people of God. There's a whole lot of doctrines out there. The doctrines of devils. That is where the enemy is confusing the body of Christ. We have an opportunity at the chosen and profitable ministry from baby miracle to mother blossom. From the youngest to the eldest, we have the opportunity to fix that. I know maybe other baby year that are younger than baby miracle, but <laughs> start there. From the youngest to the eldest. I don't know if uh, Mother Blossom is really the eldest still, but right there. Yeah. We have an opportunity to deal with that. Let us get back to the Bible. Let us study the word of God. Let us understand it from God's perspective. And let us present it as Christ would want us to present. Anything that I come to teach, people of God, they like the Berians. Line it with scriptures. Line it with scriptures. Look in the scriptures. Line it with scriptures. Don't just take my word fit as a bishop said. No, 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 no. Get into the word. Get into the word. Get into the word. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Any, 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 any question, any comment, anything before we close? The person, the opportunity. Speak nobody. People them vex with me. I thank you very much for vexing with me. That's good. Bishop. Yeah. 
um in 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 the book of psalms the scriptures that david that david doesn't refer to them um i, I don't know exactly how to put it but those scriptures are still from god right they are still regarding god no me not understand that question I'm not, I'm not sure all for, all for, for, all right. for write, write it down and text me. All right, sir. Write and text me. I can't, I can't answer the question. Or you ask it, I can't answer it. I'm not, I'm not it's comprehending. Really she's asking you if it was still God who had given the person the unction to write those scriptures. Yes, yes, Sister it. Abigail. Thank you. Yeah, but the Bible tells us that men write as if Holy Spirit give them, give them, um, Guidance to write. That's what the scripture said. Okay. If you are going to go deeper as to ask about um the canon, how some books maybe were left out, like they are crappy fun, all of these things, right? That's a different teaching. That 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 is coming up soon where you can better understand it. Because again, we have to go oh. in depth for you to really understand. Yes, all scripture is inspiration of God. Yes, thank you, um, Mister Abba. Oh. So, all right. Okay. So we are okay. we are we are, we are starting you. the Bible. We are starting the Bible um, college very soon. So you are able now to understand because again, what is happening is that when we get into this deep teaching, we understand that we are basically teaching over your head. So you're not grasping it and understanding. So what we are doing now, we are setting things to start from the grasp, so you understand. Why they were left out, right? Why they did not meet? There are still history books. There are still in, information in it that is, is relevant, right? Some of them, the I passed, some of, so we'll explain to you so you can better understand why. All right? Oh, okay, then, sir. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, to God be the glory, great things you have done. Sister Beverly, I have one first time I'm seeing you. I don't know if I've seen you. Welcome to the Chosen and Profitable Ministry. God bless you. Is it your very first time? Sister Bev? Sister Bev. Is it your first time, Sister Bev? You have to unmute your mic. Yes, there yes, you go. It's my first time. It's your first time. Welcome. Welcome, Sister Bev, to Thank Chosen you. and Prophetic Ministry. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, 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 I, I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm one of your bishop, and there are others, other bishop and ministers that you'll meet later. And welcome to the family of God. Amen. Feel free at any time to come. And you can you you, are, you feel free to share. Don't 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 shut up. You can put up your hand at any time. Ask any question. You can share. This is not a place where you are shut up. So come here. Feel free. Be at home. All right, okay. Sister Bev. Welcome. Okay. Okay. Are Thank you, you. Are you a child of God? Right. You are a child of God. Right. Yes. Yes. What? To God be the glory. All right. So we'll call upon you from time to time to pray and to. Do as the Lord have you to do, all right? Okay, okay. Yeah, so this is not a place where you're going to come and be and be um and, and, and be stagnant. You're going to work for the Lord, all right? Okay, okay. Amen. Wonderful. Where are you from? In Jamaica or overseas? No. I'm overseas. Okay, you're overseas. All right, wonderful. So the time difference may be different. All right, so we start. Um, our our morning is at eight fifteen, start in the morning, and in the evening, apart from we having um any special function, is same eight fifteen p.m. So eight fifteen a.m. in the morning, morning and eight fifteen p.m. in the evening. All right, Jamaica time. Oh, this is a bit drop, drop off. Right, should drop off. All right. All right. Anybody else? Sister Tamara? Yes, I think I've seen Sister Tamara for the very first time. Good morning, Sister Tamara. Good morning. How are you doing? Not too bad. Is your first time being here today? Not 
Yeah, first time now for a while because um, Brother Verani invited me up to your time. I was on there before and I jump okay. off. And I, yes, so. Okay, now, welcome back permanently. Right, so I'm a Wonderful. new. And yeah, just recently baptized. So. To God be the glory. Yes, so I just want to worship with you, yeah, and get more understanding. You're at the right place at the right time. Welcome, Sister Tamara. Welcome. Amen. Thank Feel you. free to lift your hands. Feel free to ask questions. Anything you don't yes. understand, do not leave the line without asking questions. I don't want you to leave confused. Amen. Yes. Or anything, ask questions. Amen. Don't be afraid. Nobody, we are a family here. Yes? yes. We are family. Yes, we are yes. family. We are one family. We are we are one family. One family. Amen. There's no segregation, no division. Mm -hmm. We are one family. We look out for each other. We help each other. Yes, we right. Our roots remain the same. While we're growing different, growing different um direction, our we our root remain the same in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All right. All right, set them on. So then why 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 oh. zoom? Okay, I think I'll keep zoom kick yeah. All right, what wonderful. All right. Yeah, all, all right. right. Anybody else? Yes, wonderful. Welcome, woman of God. All right, anybody else? Anybody else that I miss? Amen. Mr. Tracy Rose Hall. Come on, you're always here. <laughs> Great is Minister, Sister Kerry. Minister Kerry one. Perfect. All right. Cool. All right. So we come to the end of this morning. Amen. We're still going to continue on altars tomorrow. Amen. Tomorrow we're going to look at um building our spiritual altars and we're going to look from the New Testament. Amen. From the Old Testament, sorry. How the, what what was the significant there? Amen. And we are going to also look at portals. Amen. Um, and you will understand also. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right. So um portals are very um important to your prayer life. Amen. Portals. You remember um in in Jacob, right, he would have seen angel descending and, and ascending from heaven. That's a portal that was open. All right. So God bless you. Amen. God bless you. We're going to pray and close. Father, we thank you for this morning. We want to thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for your love, your peace, and your joy. Thank you, Almighty God, that we can come together to worship you in the beauty of holiness. Father, I pray, Almighty God, that you continue to give us insight, revelation, understanding, wisdom of your word, Almighty God. Father, I pray that you send illumination to your word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Father, as you inspire us, Almighty God, to be a blessing, not just to Almighty God, Almighty God, those and so on on YouTube, but everybody that we come in contact with. Father, we pray that your grace will continue to rest upon this ministry. We pray, Almighty God, Jesus, that you will continue to, oh God, for Almighty God, our newcomers, Almighty God, those who are coming back. We thank you for them, Almighty God. We pray that you will bless them. God, give them revelational insight and wisdom. Father, I pray, Almighty God, Jesus, that as we continue to pray together, we'll stay together. And Father, we'll learn of you. And Almighty God, you will be glorified. Father, as we're about to leave this line, not from your presence, we pray, Holy Ghost, that you'll lead the and guide us. Cover us under your blood. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth, name we pray. And the church say amen. 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 Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, you all have Amen. a wonderful and blessed day. Amen. So let's say our benediction. Our benediction is taken from Numbers chapter 6, 24 to 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord makes his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Have